Namaste. So here I want to discuss something very powerful that has been revealed to me in the last few days. And this is an extension of Ramana Maharshi's technique of Atma Vichara. And I call it Chid Atma Vichara because it's an inquiry into the sense of I am in the three states of consciousness. So over the last couple of years, we've been talking again and again about the four states of consciousness. And the four darshanams or views. And of course, they are Dvaita Vada, Vishishta Dvaita Vada, Vivarta Vada, and Dajata Vada. And then there's the knots or blocks or gateways, the Brahma Granti, the Vishnu Granti, and the Rudra Granti. And so the blocks or gateways have to be penetrated or passed before one can get to the higher stages. Now, we've talked a great deal about the Brahma Granti and how the identification with the body has to be overcome, the three lower chakras. Then we talked about Vishnu Granti and how the identification with the false I, the feelings, emotions, identifications with various designations and other false uh, identities have to be given up. But we haven't talked much about the Rudra Granti. The Rudra Granti is very esoteric and difficult to understand. That's why most people never get beyond the mental stage of self-inquiry, Atma Vichara, because they can't differentiate between consciousness and awareness. Awareness is consciousness without an object or with itself as the object. So we've given various techniques over the years, especially the golden flower technique, by which one can realize this. But people keep getting hung up in consciousness because they don't know the difference between consciousness and awareness, which is the root. So today we're going to talk about these different states of consciousness. Now, to have consciousness, you have to have a subject and you have to have objects. Brahman is the first subject, and that is pure awareness. Then there's the witness, and this is the beginning of consciousness, and it is situated in the Ananda Maya Kosha. Then there are the objects, intelligence, which is the Vijnana Maya Kosha, mind, the Mano Maya Kosha, the senses, the pranamaya kosha, and the world, the anamaya kosha, including the body and the possessions and all that kind of gross stuff. <laughs> so by gradually overcoming and differentiating between these different levels of consciousness, one approaches the pure consciousness or atma, uh, the self with a capital S not these other little false selves or uh, delusive identities, huh? the particularizations of the self. So anyway, to remove the upadi, the restrictions or the limiting adjuncts on the pure consciousness, Brahman, and to realize the higher states of, of uh, Turiya and Turiya Tita, then one must differentiate between consciousness and awareness. So how do you do that? Well, here's another diagram. The pure subject is Brahman. And this is Turiyatita consciousness. Then there's the witness, which is Turiya. And then there are the three states of consciousness. Consciousness of the world, Jagrat. Consciousness of dreams, svapna, 
and consciousness of deep sleep, sushupti. So the secret of this method is that one makes the object of inquiry the three states of consciousness, thus differentiating between awareness and consciousness. So how do you do this? Okay. The best time for this method is just after awakening from sleep. Now, when you first awaken from sleep, you are automatically in Turiya because you are at the junction of deep sleep, dreams, and waking consciousness. So this assumes, of course, that you have already done the, the preliminary self-inquiry in which you get rid of the false ego. Uh -huh. The false ego are all the delusive identifications with various designations, such as I am so-and-so, huh? I am Joe Blow <laughs> from Kokomo. <laughs> I'm the son of Mo Blow. <laughs> and I am a member of this country and this race and such and such uh, religion and so-and-so political party and blah, 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 and blah. All these are designations, abstractions. They are not real. They're only words. We talked before about the house of cards that the whole world is built up on and how people identify with these delusive identifications and they think that's who they are. Well, that has to be got rid of first. Then, once that is out of the way, and the, the way you do that, of course, is that you see how you are projecting I, the feeling of I am, into these various false things. So the way you do that, practically speaking, is that you grab hold of that feeling of I am that is being projected, for example, into the body. Huh? Most people think I am this body. So if you uh, grab a hold of this feeling of I am in the body, I am the body, and then you follow it back to its source, follow it back to its root, you'll find that it will lift it will dissipate and leave a nice open space where there's no more this I am the body feeling. It's very liberating. It's very nice. So then once, once all that nonsense is out of the way, this is the advanced stage of Atma Vichara. First thing upon awakening, look for the three states of consciousness, waking, dreaming and sleep. Differentiate between these three and then look for the sense of I am. For example, when you're first waking up in the morning, you start to become aware of your body. So this is Jagrat, consciousness of the world. So look at how the sense of I am is projected into that grab a hold of it and follow it back to its source, which is the origin of awareness, the real I am. And it will disappear, or at least it will not overcome you and make you think I am, I am this body. Then look at the dream. Huh? Now dreaming actually goes on all the time. For example, in our inner conversation, huh? the mind blabbing to itself, in our memories, and in our thinking and trying to anticipate what is going to happen. This is all a dream. Huh? We're modeling the world and trying to guess what's going to happen. <laughs> well, good luck with that. Anyway, this is a dream. It's not reality. So when you're half awake, just in the morning, look at how you tend to slip back into dreaming. Watch these dreams arise. Look at the I am feeling in those dreams. Grab hold of it and then trace it back to its source. The real I am, the pure awareness. And you'll find that it will dissipate 
You will not any longer be under control of the dreams. Then look at Shushupta, the sleep consciousness. Sleep is ignorance. Now, it's liberating in the sense that it doesn't have any content. It doesn't have anything to be aware of. So it appears as unawareness. And Shushupti is with us all the time too. It's called the subconscious or the unconscious mind in psychology. And so we throw all the junk that we don't want to be aware of into this Sushupti. And of course that comes back to bite us later, but that's another dis discussion. The, the point here is to see when ignorance begins to overcome us in the twilight zone between sleep and waking. Become aware of the feeling of I am in that sleep consciousness and then follow it back to its source of pure awareness. Now what this will do is, is differentiate between the self as the subject, self with a capital S, and these three states of consciousness as the objects. So in other words, we're making a distinction now between self or pure awareness and consciousness or awareness with an object. So this is something that can be done at any time, but of course it's best done just upon waking from sleep or just upon going into sleep. And one becomes aware of these three states of consciousness, how we identify with them and project the sense of I am into them. And that's how we become deluded by them and identify with them and think that this is me, this is myself, this is who I am. But no, it's not. <laughs> so this exercise or technique or method is the advanced stage of Atma Vichara, which specifically cultivates the state of Turiya, the fourth state of consciousness. Now the fourth state, we've discussed this many times before over the last years. The fourth state is the junction, the Sandhya, between the other three states. You see, this is why we do our prayers and meditation at the time of sunrise, noon, and sunset. They symbolize these three states, three states of consciousness. And of course, the prayers are to direct us towards the fourth state where we are in control of and transcendental to the other three states, which are based on an identification. Uh, so this false identification is what keeps us asleep. It, what, it keeps us in identification with the mind, the body, our feelings, our desires, and of course, sleep. So to really awaken, one needs to break this identification and see that I am separate from these states of consciousness. I am pure awareness. Now, if you do this exercise, and you're successful at it, you will find yourself in samadhi automatically. You will automatically detach from the senses. You will automatically transcend the mind. You will automatically escape from sleep. And you will find yourself in a completely new space. A complete, well, actually, it's the original space. <laughs> the real self which is known as Brahman. Now, for all those of you who actually made it to the end of the video, <laughs> you get the extra special knowledge here. This is given in Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. But nobody knows about it because nobody actually realizes what they're talking about. Now, I'll give you an example of why this happens. The other day, I was doing a series on Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, and they were titled as, you know, what they are, Sutra number so-and-so. Huh? And the views kept going down, 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 down. So one day, I did a, a video, and then the very next day, 
I did another video on exactly the same topic, only I didn't title it Patanjali Yoga Sutra number so and so. And it got double the views. So you see, people are so lazy, people are so ignorant, they don't want to go to the original source. Huh? They want to have somebody like me understand and digest it for them and then, then give it again as my own opinion. And that's more attractive than going to the original source, which is far higher and more complete. But I guess that's people today. So in the same way, we're talking about, in this video, a technique that's well known among the so-called followers of Ramana Maharshi, yet none of them have ever developed it beyond its original presentation. No one has ever particularized it or analyzed it or shown how it can be applied to different objects such as the states of consciousness in such a way as to automatically give the highest result of yoga, which is attainment of samadhi. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.